everyone. I'm Elisa Vidi, the founder of Flow Living. And as you know, we're celebrating the 10 year anniversary of helping women recover from hormonal issues naturally. I'm leading a series of conversations with some of my favorite female founders, athletes, activists, and women who have been on their own hormonal journey because we're all on a hormonal journey every day. And we're here to unpack why it's so important that you understand your hormones and how they work, to remind you that you don't have to tolerate suffering and to educate you on why it's important to take action. Joining me today is my friend, Krista Williams, who is an amazing podcast host of Almost 30, an empath and healer, creator of the Modern Tarot Decks and the creator of the Life Edit. Welcome, Krista. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I was just kind of, when you were talking, I was just remembering when we did that event in New York and I was just thinking about us on stage sharing our voices in New York and how many years I've known you, but I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited to chat through something that's so important to me that I've learned so much from you about. Well, I, I always love chatting with you. And yes, I remember that was a really fun event. Um, I, we had a good time <laughs> as we always do. <laughs> well, all right, let's get right into it. Tell me about your experience with your hormones. You know, like what has your journey been, you know, we all, or a fun fact, or, well, it's not so fun, but an interesting fact is that 80% of women suffer from a hormonal issue at some point in her lifetime. So this is pretty much all of us. And I want to just sort of destigmatize this conversation. So share your, your version of rea hormonal reality. How's that been for you so far? Yes. So I, um, I think it started when I got on um, birth control when I was pretty young and I didn't really receive any education about it. Just kind of was put on birth control as like the one-stop shop solution for me to not get pregnant. And I remember just feeling so depressed and having this period in time where I felt like I wasn't myself. I felt like I just had like a shield or a veil over who I was and having the experience of feeling like I was someone that was really depressed and was really anxious and would go through these things. And I think there's a lot of that that's been, um, that's probably true. You know, I do experience that, but it was definitely exacerbated through my period on birth control. And then I think the biggest journey with my hormones really started when I was in my twenties, when I moved from New York city to Los Angeles when I had a period in time where I put on like 20 pounds in probably a month um, and really, really struggled with my hormones. I was completely burnt out. I was working out all the time. I was just starting almost 30, working a full-time job, just had moved, all of these things. And my hormones were completely out of whack. My cortisol levels were super high, which then affected the rest of my hormones. And I felt like I was I just felt so ashamed because I knew that it wasn't just me working out or eating well. I knew there were so many different factors that were playing in the fact that I would fall asleep in the afternoon. I would be up all night and I had put on all this weight. So understanding and learning about how my hormones were impacting what was happening in my life and in my body was instrumental. And what it really did most importantly, not only after I learned that was able to sort of balance my weight issues and, you know, the energy level issues was that it really helped me gain a greater sense of compassion for my body where I was like, oh my gosh, you are actually in response to all the things I've been doing, which is burning the candle at both ends, working out hit workouts all the time, you know, just the disrespect and the level of um, neglect that I had really given my body over the past years and months really was now being shown in what was happening with my hormones. And then realizing that, wow, my body is in response to me. And there's these beautiful hormones that are trying to do their best, but are actually completely out of whack because of the disrespect I've had with my body was really powerful. And it actually gave me so much freedom in my body acceptance journey that I don't think I had before, you know, to know that, yeah, there's this beautiful element of being a woman that is at play in my experience with my hormones that I can really tend to, and I can really be with, and I can really be mindful of was so powerful and empowering for me. I, I this is why I wanted to bring you into the series because I know this story and I love the, it's very special that you figured that out, you know, because yes. first of all, that's a, a massive undertaking that you went from having sort of 
this whole experience of depression and then the weight gain and then to for you to be sort of tapped in enough to your own inner guidance system to say, you know, this is not working for me. I'm not feeling the way I want to feel. Um, how can I start to listen to what's going on and respond in a more compassionate way? That is not the typical <laughs> knee jerk reaction that we have as women, because we're taught to really look at our bodies like, you know, everything hormonal is a curse. You're a victim, you know, just throw up your hands and, and, and do nothing. And to not look at it like, uh, you know, a message from the body. And so I think it's just really wonderful that you were able to figure that out pretty much on your own. I mean, that's really an incredible story to share. And I think that it's very likely that we all hear that inner little nudging from our, our cells, our soul saying, you know, there's a better way, but we don't often feel confident enough to listen to that message. And the fact that you did, you know, is just really a testament to how, the relationship that you have with your body today. Yeah. Was it was it difficult to find information to help you in listening to that inner guidance and trying to figure out what the right ne next steps were? You know, how long was that process? Yeah, I think I'm so grateful that I live in Los Angeles and, you know, I think that gave me more access to information related to my hormones and related to things outside of like the mainstream, because I had spent most of my life on a body journey where I felt like I could hate my body into being the way I wanted it to be. I would hate my body to being thinner. I would hate my body into looking how I felt like it should look. So to have this period in time where I'd gained that much weight was my actual nightmare from the person I was then. So to be faced with like my true nightmare of gaining weight, because I was so afraid to be any weight other than less than I was even then was like, just like a crisis mode for me. So I was really trying to do anything that I could to figure out what was happening in my body. But I knew based on the energy level thing that I had been having, how my energy levels was so off, my sleep was off and just the way the weight felt in my body and how hard I was working, I knew that something was off. I knew that something was, you know, not sitting right with me and not working. And I think when you're that desperate to change the way that your body looks, you'll really look at all these sources. You're like, what could it be? Could it be my thyroid? Could it be my hormone? So it was a little bit of, I will give myself credit in that. I'm grateful I listened to my intuition, but I'll also be really honest that I think in my desire of fear of gaining weight, I was like, I'll do anything and I'll try anything, but information wasn't really readily available. It was like, here's your hormones. They might relate to something, but at that time it was more so like diet, nutrition, period, the end, that's really what's impacting your weight and nothing else. So my education was really just Google finding you, finding your books, finding your work and doing my best I could to educate myself on what could support me. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's unfortunate that like for you and like it was for me and for so many women, I mean, this is, the, there isn't an easy place for us to just go and get those answers and that information, you know, when I was going through my experience and yes, the physical stuff is very motivating, you know, with the acne or with weight, with whatever you're, it, yeah, but also the mental health stuff too. I mean, Absolutely. nothing like a whole bunch of depression and anxiety to make you feel like- I thought it was like, my personality. I was like, oh, I'm a depressed, anxious person. And this is who I am. And it was, cause it was formative years. Like the formative yeah. years of high school are like, this is who you are. So that I just thought it was who I was. And that's just, oh, I just, I'm so sad for that version of me because I'm like, oh, I wish you could know the beautiful aspects of your personality too, that were kind of like subdued because the depression and anxiety were so much. I love that you brought that up because I always feel like I've lost that decade of my own, you know, child self from 12 to 22, you know, just dealing with all the hormonal issues. And, and I think now hearing you say the same thing, how many young girls from 12 to 22, you know, are just not joyful. I mean, what a beautiful time of your life. You're, you know, you're blooming like a flower, you're full of energy, you're full of creativity. And instead, just because we're missing the correct information and the correct support and a place to go to get that help that you might need as your hormones transition, um, that you're instead sad and not feeling in alignment with your own self and confused and frustrated. And it's just, 
you know, it's something certainly that we feel passionate about at Flow Living to be sort of this um, destination for people. I mean, I, I built it because I was patient zero, you know, that we needed a place to go to get that kind of information to, to make sure that, you know, if you're dealing with something, you don't feel alone because it's, it's just like too much with the solo trips all, all at this point, I think, you know? How did you feel? I know we've had, I've been a very blessed to be a guest on your po beautiful podcast, the Almost 30 podcast many times. How did you first feel when you learned about cycle thinking? Um, how has that impacted you? I felt confused because it felt like so obvious. You know, it's one of those things that hits you where you're like, this is so obvious. And I felt a little frustrated that it had been information that had been kept from me, where when you realize that a lot of the data and research around wellness, nutrition, and yeah, just the wellness nutrition space is based on men, is based on what works best for men. It's really kind of disheartening because you're like, I've been trying so hard to be well or be healthy or to be all these things. And I've been comparing it to a data set that's not related to me and that's not for me. Um, and so when I found it, I felt confused and I felt like, why well, I haven't been doing this forever. But then I felt just again, that like beautiful liberation around being a woman, like finding these elements of like mysticism and magic in a way where I'm like, oh my God, this is like so witchy and this is so fun. And this is like so interesting. And this is so powerful that I change so often. And I think also in life, I've always felt like I change all the time. I'm always growing. You know, my moods are just kind of whatever they are as a woman, like one day I'm this way, another day I'm this way. And it also was like an explanation for like the aspects of me that I felt like I was and how I am in the world. So it was so liberating and so nice. And I applied, what I applied first was, um, really around the workouts because I had been working out so much. I had been doing hit workouts all the time. I was able to really shift my workouts and really look at data and research that I saw with your work and learn more about your work and liberate myself from doing all of the things that I had been doing all the time. And my body just responded so well. It was like, just like a deep sigh and a deep sense of relief that I wasn't going to keep pushing and grinding in a way that wasn't sustainable or healthy for me. And I actually could look at information from you and be like, okay, this is my guide for how I'm going to be with my body in a way that actually feels better for me and feels freeing. I mean, first of all, you can be, you can work smarter, not harder. Right. And, and nature has designed certainly the female body to be highly efficient. And you're absolutely so brilliant to put that picture frame around the frustration of if you're using something that was developed for a different ecosystem right male the male ecosystem you're gonna be you know beating your head up against that proverbial wall with whatever it is you're trying to do you're working harder but not smarter so I, I i love it that for every woman they kind of can find a path in with the cycle syncing method whether it's starting with workouts or starting with food and for so many different reasons whether you're trying to recalibrate your cycle or you know deal with weight struggles that you know have sort of plagued you historically because of you know unnecessarily with all the wrong workouts that aren't catering to your hormones, but that everyone, regardless of how they start on the, the journey, that they come to this sense of like love and, and wonderment and a new relationship to the fact that they are a dynamic, hormonal, powerful creature. And that that is that the practice of changing your self care every phase makes you really appreciate the gifts of each phase and and helps you embrace the fact that you're constantly changing and that you see that as a positive not as the negative and i love that it's like a you you don't have to talk through the therapy around the wounding that trying to be the same every day has done you but instead you can just sort of like flow through it and 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 heal from that and and you know be in a state of joy with with being in your body which i think is so you know, why else are we here? Right. I know. <laughs> I know. I love that you brought that in too, because it's like when we're on the journey of self-love and having deeper self-compassion and, and greater wholeness, it's like to do that, we have to understand what is, and we have to see aspects of ourselves that are like not fitting into the boxes and like 
Okay. If so, if what is true is that I'm like a hormonal being that has different cycles that goes through different phases and, you know, my body changes very regularly by understanding that I can love it and I can be with it and I can tend to it and I can care for it. So I think there's such an expansion of the way that we can love ourselves as these unique microcosms and beings. And you could really look in awe at the female form and the female body and be like, this is so amazing and beautiful. And it's so powerful. And it's such a, it's such a way that, um, we can really just empower ourselves and learn to love ourselves more through that understanding alone. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think there's, there's more than just hormonal healing, available to you as you use the method. And I think that's really a, a wonderful side effect. Um, you know, I've mentioned earlier that I've been lucky enough to be on your podcast many times, but why do you um, and Lindsay feel like you want to use this platform of your of the Almost 30 podcast to talk about these issues with women? Why is that important to you guys? Yeah, so Almost 30, um is a podcast that Lindsay and I do. And I think one of our missions is really to talk about things and share information that we wish we would have known when we were younger, or we wish we would have known earlier. Um, we're now over 30 now, you know, the podcast is called almost 30. And there's so much information that we've shared and discussed on the show that we feel like no one's talking about, or we feel like is kind of kept from the mainstream or kept from people. And when I was going through my own hormone journey, there was so much that I was learning from you and from, you know, other people in the space about it that I wanted to share with women. I wanted them to feel better about um, their bodies and how they felt in them and their health and nutrition. And I wanted to give them all the tools that I can. So it felt like such a way to liberate and empower them. And we know, and you, you know, you and I both know that like, it's not just about that. It's about how you feel. So if a woman is able to really understand and love her body, she's able to be more confident at work. She's able to be more confident dating. Like it impacts all areas of our life in such a really integrative way that seems like it doesn't, but I know for me that that understanding and the tools that I was able to use to get better in better relationship with my body changed everything. So it's like such a small thing that seems like it's just health related, but it's related to all things. Um, and we want to empower and support women in that process of knowing and loving themselves more. Uh, it's just so well phrased. And I, 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 yeah. I mean, I have almost nothing to add except that I love that you're doing that because you know, I think as women, we tend to feel much safer when we get sort of recommendations from other women that we know, like, and trust. And I think it's just such a gift that you, you know, have gone through this journey, curated some supportive tools and shared that, you know, not only does that heal your own nervous system, your own cortisol, adrenaline response, you know, but you're also then tending and befriending the women in your community to help them level up in this way and save them some time. I mean, I, I totally get it. When I went through the experience myself, my first instinct was let me help myself put on my own oxygen mask. And then if I can figure out how to do that, let me build a platform that's going to now do this for any woman who's going through this issue, because it is something that um, helps me every day to feel um like we're contributing to this massive problem i mean there are three billion women in the united states alone who are suffering from these hormonal issues like pcos and fibroids and endometriosis and infertility and the statistics are just getting worse you know infertility went from one in ten couples to now one in eight precocious puberty is on the rise in both young boys and girls you know there's just more of these problems and so we're just, um, you know, it's, I can't even believe that it's been 10 years. You know, I know we're here celebrating this 10 year anniversary and I feel like we're just getting started in terms of being able to support women with um, the new offering that we have, but to make sure that there is a place so that there's just a new, a new level of, of healthcare available for women's hormones, I think is just so it's, it's important for me. I, I feel like what, you know, that's like sort of what gets me out of bed every day. 
<laughs> um, Education component is really important. You know, I think when we think about how we're going to learn and be with our bodies, we have to educate people and understand the components that we're not learning about. Because I grew up with the food pyramid. I grew up thinking that I had to eat nine servings of grain every single day. Like it's, it's just insane how much more yeah. research and information that we now have access to. And I'm so grateful that I can be a place and you as well, where we can provide people with information that I wish I would have had. That's going to really support them in understanding their body and being with their body and treating their body with the love that it deserves. Well, I mean, it's such a delight chatting with you all the time. What do you want women to know about dealing with hormonal issues as we sort of wrap our chat today? What, what do you think is the most important takeaway that, that, that someone can walk away from our chat with today? Mm, what I will say is that having that part of my journey and then, you know, being years from that, I've had, I've been blood tested. I've been, you know, I had great times where my hormones are perfectly imbalanced. I've had, you know, my hormones be off over the years. And I think if we can approach things with like kindness and compassion, now I see whenever I get blood work done and I can see my hormones as like, I'm like a little chemist where I can be like, okay, what levers do I have to pull to like find myself back in balance? Do I need to add more fats? Do I need to do, you know, slow down my workouts, like deeper sleep? Do I need to take more supplements? Like you can get from flow living. Like what is it that I need to do to support myself and being more whole? So what I would say to people is approach everything with kindness and compassion and just know that your body is doing its very best. It's listening to every single thing that you say in your conscious and subconscious mind and trying to support you as best it can. So when we come to our bodies to try and fix them or change them, that's not going to work. We should come to our bodies with the hope that we can love them into more wholeness and into more health. So as much love and compassion and grace we can have for ourselves in this process, I think is going to support a lot of people because I know it can be frustrating to have skin issues, weight gain, all of the things. Um, but really those are just kind of alarm bells and messages that our body's sending to us with hopes that we can support it and feeling better. Beautiful. I mean, loving action is all about, you know, where you need to be. And, and I think that's such a nice reframe on the sort of victim do nothing, you know, or try not to think about it kind of you know, conditioning that we receive instead looking at it as, you know, how can I lean in here? How can I listen? What can I do to be more loving and supportive? Thank you so much for sharing your story, Krista. You know, it's so important that we talk about these things, that we normalize this conversation. I think what you've been doing on your platform at Almost 30 is so important to, to contribute to the changing narrative uh, around women's health um, and around self-love and more um, you know, the journey to a more whole and healthy relationship with oneself. And, you know, we're here celebrating our 10 year anniversary as we have been trailblazing and innovating a path forward for hormonal health care. Um, thank you so much for being part of this celebration with us. I am really excited about what is coming next. And I hope you all download the app that is now free, take your evaluation, get yourself started, see what could be going on for you and, and get into that loving action that Krista described so beautifully for yourself. Amazing. I'm pumped. I, I got a sneak peek y'all and it is unbelievable. So thank you so much. I love being in your orbit and I'm really grateful for your work. It's changed my life. I'm grateful for all that you do. And yeah, I just love knowing you as a human. This was a pleasure. Bye for now, everybody. 